You know, when I come out into the woods, one of the things I really like to do is make myself comfortable. I don't think I'm alone in doing that. And there's a variety of ways you can do that. And when it comes to sitting down, I don't like sitting on the ground anymore. So I've come up with a few alternatives. If you're interested in seeing what I have, keep watching. So this video was inspired by comments from a couple of viewers on a recent video I did where I reviewed the Kilos outdoor chair. And one of the comments was, is the person was surprised I didn't compare the chair against my hammock chair. Fair enough, I thought, I can do that. And the other comment was they wanted a more broader approach, like what else do you have that you like to use when you're in the woods to be comfortable to sit on? So that's where I've come from. So what I'll do is I have the hammock chair set up. I'm going to sit in it and I'm going to go over three different categories of things. First, it'll be the ones that I kneel on, but also sit on. And then it'll be ones that I've made or purchased just for the purposes of sitting on. And then it will be the hammock chair and the keyless outdoor chair. All right, let's get started. So right off of the top, uh, some of these things I've made myself and some of which I have purchased, some of them at the uh, thrift store, others online. And I'm just going to give you some highlights. These are not reviews of any of these products, just some alternatives that you may want to consider. So right off of the top, first thing, this is in the back of whatever backpack I have on for the day. In fact, it resides in the back of the one I use most often. And this is just a kneeling pad. Now, you probably see this if you watch back through any of my videos, really, this is pretty much in all of them, especially if I'm going to be working around a fire or cooking or anything else. I always, always, always have this. And you can see it's seen a lot of use. Simple DIY project. So my wife used to own a preschool and one of the things she had in her preschool is those puzzle mats. If you know what I'm talking about, they're a foam mat that look like big puzzle pieces that would go together on the floor. They're comfortable to warm. They save damage to the floor underneath. Uh, yeah. Well, obviously when she retired, they, uh, she gave those to me and I said, yes, I'll take those. I have all kinds of uses for them. So this is just one of those pieces of that puzzle mat that I cut to a reasonable size that will fit in the back of my backpack, work for kneeling on in the woods or sitting on. So I can just reach into the pack, lay this down on a rock, the ground, a log, whatever is handy, keep my butt dry and warm. You know, so simple. Uh, I would encourage you, whatever else you buy or purchase to, or make for yourself is to get something like this and just stick it in the back of your pack and you always have with you. I mean, it's feather light and waterproof and cheap, right? That's the big thing. Now you can take it to one level higher and I did this more as an exercise to uh, make it just for the fun of it and have it for when I wanted to use it. And that is I took the same thing, those puzzle pieces, and I took two of them and I just made a little envelope, if you will, and I closed it up with Velcro on the end. Fingers are cold right now to make this open. All right, stuck together nicely. But you can see it's hinged and the whole idea here is that that'll go in a backpack be twice the size almost of the other one I just showed you and just provide me another option. It, you know, it's honestly, this goes out, but not all that often because usually I have the other one with me, but sometimes I take this out just because it's a little fancier, I guess. Now, even if I'm out for a day hike or just out with my wife and we've gone for a hike in one of the parks and we think we might want to sit down, a little fold up foam pad like this. And these are, I did purchase this on AliExpress. I don't think they're worth more than a couple dollars each. They're just a thin blown foam pad that folds up so, so small. I don't have the weight of it, but if it's more than one or two ounces, I'd be surprised. You can purchase these. In fact, I'll, I'll put a link to them on uh, from AliExpress or Amazon in the video description if you're interested. Does it have a name? Jungle Leopard. All right. So uh, they're made by a number of things. Now, you can purchase these from outdoor sporting goods stores like Mountain Equipment Co. up here in Canada or uh, REI in the United States or on Amazon for that matter that are made uh, by higher end companies. So they're better materials, maybe a little larger, uh, probably more durable. But, you know, when I when I purchase these, I usually get half a dozen of them for a couple of dollars from China and uh, I keep them if they get destroyed and they don't. I mean, they, they last a good long time. Sometimes I just give them away. I'm out with somebody who doesn't have one. I say, here you go. And uh, then I just reach into the pile I have at home. Um, they're simple. I can kneel on it. I can sit on it. It's wonderful. Only one thing about these, they're very, very light. So if it's all windy and you get up off of it, <laughs> good chance it'll blow away on you. So don't do that. 
All right, so the next category of items that I want to share with you that I use quite often are these two things. Now, this is a DIY roll-up mat. Uh, I'll briefly go over uh, how I made it, but I actually made a video on the construction of this, and if you're interested, you can uh, go back and have a look at it. So basically, what I did is took an old military wool blanket, some nylon material that came off of some type of a bag at uh, our thrift store, and some Reflectix, and I sewed the three of them together. So I have a waterproof base, a nice, warm, durable, stays relatively clean, uh, and it is comfortable top on it, and insulative value in the center. So you can see this is quite a bit bigger than either of those pads. I can double it up for kneeling on if I want to, triple it up as far as that goes, or I can just stretch it out and lay it down, and it gives me something to sit on. Now, one of the nice things about this is it actually can act as another layer of insulation in maybe when you're sleeping mat, you can put this underneath or on top just for another layer of insulation there. In the winter time, I'll take this out and with my hammock chair, which I'm going to be showing you in a couple minutes time, I'll lay this right in the hammock chair to keep my butt and lower back warm and it does a great job of doing that. So pretty easy to make uh, if you have any sewing skills at all or if you know someone who does, you can make these. Now I'll give a shout out to a friend of mine who does make and sew this. His name is Rob Young. I'll put his contact information below. He makes a much more, much more rustic bushcraft looking one because of course he's using a canvas, a waxed canvas and wool blanket and I believe he has Reflectix in the center of his. They're about the same size as this and uh, really really nice product. In fact I think that's where I got the inspiration to make my own. So if you're not don't have the skills or you want something that looks a little bit more bushcrafty yeah reach out to Rob and see what he can do for you. All right so there is that now, the other one I have is something I picked up at the thrift store, but these are available for purchase. And this is a uh, uh, Thinsulate, what do they call this thing? Thermarest, yeah, it's a Thermarest inflatable half pad. And you just open it up and uh, it'll self-inflate. And it's, well, I think they call it a three-quarter pad. So it's like a sleeping pad. Well, it is a sleeping pad, but it's only three-quarter length. I think at one time they were very popular for ultralight hikers who didn't want to take the weight of a full-length uh, foam pad like this and uh, into the, you know, on their hiking trails. That was before air mattresses or air pads uh, became more popular, more prevalent. But yeah, so this was something that was available then. I think they've gone out of fashion primarily. I know you can still purchase them because I have seen them online. Uh, the benefit of this is that it uh, rolls up kind of small. You unroll it, it self-inflates. Old ones tend to take quite a while to really inflate. And uh, so it works well for the same things that my homemade one works. Now, the downside of this, of course, is if you have to purchase it, there's going to be a cost involved greater than making it for yourself. Of course, the plus is you don't have to make it for yourself. The other downside is this will work as long as it doesn't get punctured. If it gets punctured, then you're going to lose your, your loft and the ability to uh, use this for anything. But maybe this is something you want for to use uh, when you go out because you could also, again, combine this with any sleeping pad for an extra layer of insulation and double up on the warmth. All right, so the final category of items that um, you can choose to use in the woods, at least that I have, are my hammock chair and my little fold-up camp chair. So both of these items uh, I've reviewed in videos in the past, actually the Kilos outdoor chair and its high back uh, bigger brother, I've just recently reviewed, so they're in my playlists not too far back. This one, the hammock chair, uh, uh, that would be a little further back, but if you look for hammock chair, you'll find this uh, quite easily. So this one I made myself with some material that I did purchase at a fabric store because I was looking for some heavyweight material. I won't be going into any great detail on this because if you're interested, you can go back and have a look at that video. But what I was asked is, is to compare the two of them. So when I considered that, I said, well, okay, I guess the best way to look at this is what are the pros and cons of each of them. So the hammock chair I've been using now seven years maybe. And uh, yes, you can purchase these, by the way, commercially. I will put a link in the video description. There is a friend of mine in Ontario. Uh, his name is, trail name is Jeep, and his YouTube channel is Econo Challenge. He makes a slightly smaller, 
ultralight version of this, of ripstop nylon. Uh, I wanted mine a little larger, a little bit more heavy duty. It does add some weight to it, but not a whole lot. So let me just show you the features of this chair and what I really like about it, and then I'll talk about it does have a few downsides. All right, so what do I really like about it? Comfort. I mean, it's, it's just a simple thing to make, really, and go back to that other video, and extremely, extremely comfortable. Like, watch, this, this is nice, right? You sit, I'll take my hat off, I lean back, and I could, actually I have gone to sleep, had a, like a mid-afternoon snooze in this for a period of time. I could almost do that now. It works so well that way. It fully supports my back all the way up and down, right up to the top up here. Just a little bit of a learning experience to figure out how to get the chair to be in the most comfortable position and the length and everything else. But once you have it works perfectly. Now, this is one way of using the chair. The other way that I demonstrated in that other video is you can use it like a small hammock. So you can actually suspend it between two trees. And as you can see, it's not a full length by any means, but if you do so and you have two trees and you don't want to go through making a tripod like I've here, I do here, uh, you set it up between two trees and you can sit in that, and that'll keep you off the ground and keep you quite comfortable as well. So that is the pros for this thing. Oh, the other thing is small, right? Small and compact and lightweight. Now, the uh, stuff sack for this, I've actually sewn onto the side of the bag. So you can see, that's what everything stuffs in, including the straps, the tree straps, which are laying on the ground here somewhere. Uh, everything just folds back inside of itself, and it just fits up very small inside of my backpack. All right, so those are the pros for this thing. What are the cons? Well, obviously, construction. You have to find, now this is all dead standing that I cut down for this. And uh, you know, it could have been firewood, but I was more interested in comfort when I gathered these things up. So there are two ways of doing this. You need either these three pieces, the two uprights and a cross piece down here, as long as you have a tree that you can lean it against. If you don't have any trees handy that you can lean it against, you're going to need a fourth piece, another piece for a tripod so that you can uh, extend it out the back like you would a tripod over a fireplace. So the downside, first you have to gather the wood, then you have to assemble it. And uh, yeah, so I reserve this for places I know that I'm going to, that I have the tripod already made. So I have two sites here out here in the woods that I, I go to alternative days. This one uh, has been here actually a couple of years. The bark is all rotting and coming off of it, but um, it's still strong enough to support me, so I'm not too concerned about that. Yeah, make sure you get sticks that are strong enough to support you before you assemble it, although the weight is well distributed here. Um, yeah, so that's it. You have to have wood. Basically, you have to have trees that you can use to to uh, construct this. So that's one of the downsides. But if you're going to be on a location for any length of time or returning to that lo location, maybe it's worth your while to do exactly that. This is not something for a, a lightweight hiker who's going to be in different places every day or move throughout the day and move to different places because you, you probably just won't have these materials handy. Or even if the materials are there, it takes quite a bit of time to build it. Well, not a lot of time, but a little bit of time to build it. I use this all winter. In fact, I mentioned a minute ago about insulating it with this mat. So here's the mat I showed you, and this will fit in here. A little slippery, so you make sure that it stays up. And now I'm fully insulated under my, well, from the height of my thighs, I guess, halfway down my thighs, right up to the bottom of my shoulders is insulated against the cold. All right, so that's the hammock chair. And this is the other one. And again, this was just reviewed recently. This is the Kilos outdoor chair. It's a good little chair. It's quite, quite good. Uh, well, quite good. It's very good. In fact, I, I did a, a review on it, how much I liked it and how I liked the style of construction that goes along with this. But it does have a few pros and cons to go with it. Number one, is the cost. Uh, you have to purchase this chair. It's not going to be free. They're not inexpensive. They're not overly expensive, but it's something that you have to purchase. Number two, they're bigger and heavier. If you go back to my review, uh, it, it goes in a package about this big and uh, you know, it's, it's got some weight to it, not really heavy, but it's got some weight and some bulk to it. So you have to weigh off, Do is that comfort important to you? Uh, to me, it is. It's important for me to be comfortable while I'm out here. So I don't mind carrying this chair under certain circumstances. What are the pros? 
It is comfortable. It is off of the ground. It supports my lower back, but it does not support my higher back or my upper back. I can't rest my neck against it. Uh, that's, I guess, you consider a bit of a con. That con is overcome with the high back version, and I had quite a few people uh, say to me in comments that that was important that they have support right up to the back of their neck, and I totally understand that. I mean, that's the one downside of this chair. I can get very comfortable, but I can't lean my head back. I have to kind of lean forward to stay comfortable. That's what you give up in a small chair like that. Uh, it also, some people it, of uh, any girth, we're gonna find this a little bit uncomfortable. That you make to the size you want and then you're, you're all good to go. Uh, the advantages here is I can set this up anywhere, almost anywhere, but I don't require trees or any construction wood. I just need a couple minutes to put the thing together. And I say almost anywhere because there are some limitations to chairs of this design. They don't work well on the beach in the sand. Um, even this one with its improved little foot, uh, feet on the bottom of its legs, which will hold it up, they still sink to a certain degree. In the duff here in the woods uh, right today, it work, it's working just fine. But if I get into something very, very soft, chairs like this have a tendency to want to sink. Like I mentioned though, this has the better fit, footprints on the bottom of them, or feet, I guess, or whatever it is, the real rubber pads to keep it from sinking. So those are some of the cons. So you can use this just about anywhere, but it does have those limitations. Again, it does have some weight. It does have some bulk. It is comfortable, but it doesn't fully support you right up to the top of your neck. Uh, yeah, okay. So those are the pros and cons for these two chairs. All right, just before we wrap this video up, it occurs to me there was one thing more thing that I wanted to mention to you, and that was when I was talking about the hammock chair, and that is a specifically made for sitting in, and you really can't lie down in it in any way. But you know, if you have a regular hammock made of whatever material, you can do exactly the same thing by folding the hammock in half, and then it'll be about the same size as this, this hammock chair is. So then you would have your gathered end pulled together, both of those over the top of my tripod piece, and then across piece through the hammock. And again, you end up with virtually the same thing. So I guess you could get some double duty out of that. Or if you just want to set it up in regular hammock fashion between two trees, nothing wrong with sitting in that either. And there are some ultralight hammocks that can be had, which will serve just that way. So you can pretty much take one anywhere you want during the day, uh, use it as a chair to sit in, and really it doesn't add a lot of bulk to your bag. Okay, so those are the items that I own and I use on a fairly regular basis. That I, well, like I said, that yellow kneeling pad is always in my bag, and it has saved my knees and kept me from getting wet countless times. Even today the ground is very wet. And uh, yeah, so I always have that and I recommend everybody have some type of a pad. You know, I didn't mention this, but it can be used as a fan for your fire as well. So you just pick the pad up, give it a fan, and you can get your fire to come back to life quite well with it. It doesn't work quite as well as a bellows, but it does work. Uh, yeah, so those are what things I have. So I would invite you to make any comment that you want about any of these items, any questions you have about any of these items, but I'm also interested in knowing what you use when you go out into the woods to sit on to make yourself more comfortable. Okay, that's all I have for you today. If you have any questions or comments, put them in the comments section below, but until next time, get out and explore and take that path less traveled because it will make all the difference. Bye for now.